Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. As we kick off yet another Friday, I'm sitting alongside Bobby and Buddy, and we're going to be continuing the series of the uh, different the different uh, st- residential building types, which has been a lot of fun, a lot of education. Hopefully, you've learned. I've learned a lot. Good to have you guys back on the Friday. We're going to uh, good to be here. Yeah. Absolutely, always. Before we get started on the uh, series, as we roll through this again, just a reminder: if you need any assistance in buying or assistance in listing a home. Bobby's here to help you with that. Uh, you want to make sure that you're really working with someone that's not only qualified, that really knows the area. This is a unique area in the Bay Area. And uh, on top of that, Bobby has a network internationally as well, different states, countries. If you need assistance on that, contact her. There's a couple different ways you could do that. One is either text or call at area code 650-346-5352, or you could visit her website, bobbydecker.com b-o-b-b-i-d-e-c-k-e-r.com and on the financing side please remember I could help you with that purchase finance or maybe if you're considering what you could actually qualify for I could help you on that side 408-838-9060 or you could email joe at reradiolive.com so we're going to continue the series on the uh, different styles, uh, structural styles in the United States, and I'm going to have Bobby kick it off here and get us started for the day. Well, in our last program, we had not quite gotten to the last mm-hmm. two, and one was neoclassical, and then Buddy's got a bonus. But my neoclassical has very formal proportions, very classic beauty. It was an architecture that you saw in Greece and in Rome, and that was in the early 20th century. Most government buildings and universities use neoclassical concept in their design because it exudes wealth. Mm. It exudes power. <clears throat> you see a lot of it in Washington, D.C. You, um, you can't mistake it. It's very, there's lots of symmetry, tall columns, very elaborate doorways, very evenly spaced windows, all of these add up to being very key elements of the style. And then the most famous example, I think, is Thomas Jefferson's Monticello in Virginia. I mean, that is a stunning, stunning building. Everybody knows that. They do. I mean, you don't have to say anything. There's your neoclassical. Yeah, when they talk, whenever you get Thomas Jefferson, you get Mm -hmm. a picture of his his colonial, beautiful Neoclassical. neoclassical environment. Well, He's, isn't it partially colonial? Don't go there. <laughs> it's neoclassical, and you're going to talk about townhouses okay, next. Okay, all right. I'll stay on. I'll stay on track then. There you go. I, I had a fun sidebar to go to, but we're not going no. to go there. All right. So, townhouse. Bobby actually talked about this in the first one. You know, some people have a little little difference between mm-hmm. what's a condominium and what's a townhouse. Probably that confusion comes in because we put together a lot of. Uh, shall we say, condo communities that have a townhouse in them. It's the over and under, and it really came from the European era of row houses. The idea is if you don't have a lot of space, which is partially what we have here in the Bay Area, not a lot of space, townhouse is a very efficient and effective way to take a better use of the land. Um, it has some financial benefits because, you know, that they build them and they connect them, uh, just like the row houses. So uh, that was a value. And uh, it could go up fast and, and cover, not a, you know, not a lot of land. And that's very important, as I mentioned, here in California. So there are two stories or more uh, with traditional layout, side hallways, and a minimal lawn space. So they were trying to be very, very conservative in the use of space. And that's where the townhouse 
Although they are in condominium complexes, they are still townhouses. Considered townhouses, correct. And they're building more and more of those because the land's so expensive. That's why you see these, um, st- the townhouses mm-hmm. that people are, are <coughs> buying now are three and four stories high, Joe. Yeah, right. You start with your garage on the bottom, you walk up to the first level, mm-hmm. walk up to the second, and it's not unusual to have a master suite on the top. Yeah, four floors, mm-hmm. but maybe even more. And time, as Better be in by, good shape. A lot yeah, of exercise. On. A lot of exercise. Well, one thing they're doing in Marina del Rey and all the L.A. is they are putting in a column in which you could actually put an elevator. An elevator, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, for the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're, we're covering 35 different styles. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to get to them all in all know. these programs, but <laughs> we're going to try and jump in and get some Tudor and some Victorian and some cottage and bungalow. Maybe the farmhouse, mm-hmm. maybe the Oriental. We certainly did travel around the world: Oriental, Mediterranean, Greek, Roman. Oh my, so global! <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. We are going to go through. So, so we're going to start with the Tudor. Okay. Um, Go ahead, Mr. Tudor. Originating in England, that shouldn't surprise you, the Tudor style is one of the most uh, recognizable home styles, best known for its steeply pitched uh, multi-gabled roofs and decorative uh, half-timber framing. Tudors were mostly built in established neighborhoods during the first half of the 20th century. The steep-pitched roofs are perfect uh, for rainy and snowy climates, no surprise there, which is why many of these homes can be found in the Midwest and along the East Coast. So sounds like there was some smart design behind this style. <laughs> yes, it's dark, though. It's a style that's yeah. dark it, because you use dark timbers inside, yeah. dark timbers outside. You've got to like that. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to like that that's style. That's something we don't see quite as much of. <clears throat> Here in California. No, no. Yeah, there are a few that exist in Hillsboro because I remember driving around them. And there are a couple in Burlingame, but they've been painted gray. I mean, they aren't that beige with the dark timber, you mm-hmm. know, that you see in your um, Sweden. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, European. I'm thinking of the Alps. That's yeah. where you see a lot of your A lot tenders. of them, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Bobby, when you talked about neoclassical and... Uh, Thomas Jefferson's Monticello, kind mm-hmm. of an immediate picture of neoclassical. Guess where we're going now, and guess what picture comes to your mind when you say mm-hmm. Victorian? That little San Francisco, oh, yeah. three or four <laughs> buildings together mm-hmm. that are true little yep. Victorians. Yes. I mean, isn't that the representation of it that is. style? So Victorian architecture emerged between 1830 and 1910 under the reign of Queen Victoria. Aren't we going way back when? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And include the substyles such as Gothic Revival, the Italian style Joe just talked about, one we'll probably never get to, Second Empire, Queen Anne, and Stick Style. I'm not sure we're going to get to cover all those. I hope we can. Romanesque style and shingle style. So this is quite a hodgepodge mm-hmm. of a little bit of everything. And I don't think we're going to be able to cover it all in these programs. We'll have to see if the audience wants us to do another program. Mm-hmm. So it's constructed uh, more for the beauty than the functionality. As you know, all that ornamentation is just mm-hmm. so powerful. The Victorian homes tend to be more complex in design and ornate trim, bright colors. That's our little set of yes. beautiful Victorians in, mm-hmm. in San Francisco and large porches. Um, multifaceted roof lines. Yes. Mm-hmm. Kind of little different things that pop out here and there that would harken back to which style did we talk about where the they pop out of the roof? Well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, There's Victorian too many styles, is such 35 a fabulous styles. style. Yeah. Just take a tour. You know what the neatest tour is in, in San Francisco? Mm. Do that walking tour. Hmm. Really, it is so cool, except for the one gazillion steps you have to go up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's Good the part, too. But yeah, I know. They, yeah. Somebody would make a lot of money having a little tow rope. That's true. <laughs> Some yeah. very ingenious young child. <laughs> or old child. Top. Yes, get, get us, us to, to the, the top. top. Yeah. All right, it's Joe's turn. All right, cottage or bungalows. Look at that. Uh, cottage originated from the word. Cotters, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cotters, look at that. Cotters were European peasant farmers in the Middle Ages who lived in style in this style of home. So these are the places the the peasants and the workers and the, mm-hmm. is that kind of where that okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The yeah. cottage style the house typically refers to a small homemade or stone wood siding. It features a curved entryway, uh, gravel or brick front 
walkway, and brighter exterior colors. Today, flowers typically adorn the entryway, creating a beautiful curb appeal. We have a little cottage in our backyard. That's what I think about when you think of these cottages and bungalows. Yeah, you can you can picture them. At, I'd almost throw back. Bobby talked about the Cape Cod yeah. styles, and if you throw the flowers in, it mm-hmm. almost kind of says, "Oh, that's little that flower cottage or bungalow and, yeah. kind of style." Mm-hmm. Maybe a combination of all these things come together in different places. <clears throat> we were in France doing our river barge tour. Remember, we ran up to. We didn't actually run up to, but we got there. It, Alsace. And they have cottages, Joe, and they are so cute because they have one through five flower awards for who has the neatest, what are they called, buddy, flower boxes on Mm -hmm. the front of the houses. Not only on the front of the houses, but hanging from From trees trees and lights, fixtures, and so... In Your this, village gets these awards. Yeah, the, the village gets the award. So it really has something we should maybe take a look at here in the United States. You want the whole community to kind of join in well, to do cool. something so it's not together. The individual homeowner that gets that the village. I love the whole village. village. I love you that. know how does your village look? What what are you a one through five flower yeah, like gradation? That. I had one gazillion pictures, and and that's you see them in paintings, Joe. Yeah. But I had so many photographs of flower boxes, but they were stunning. The yeah. only place I've seen them that are comparable is truly is Carmel. Hmm. It seems yeah, no, you know when you go down yeah, Main right. Street, they yep. try that cottagey look. Yep. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah. Very cool. it, it really rings true. I mean, every window, even though some of these were townhouses, as mm-hmm. I had mentioned earlier, and all they had was room because no lawns, remember? Right. All they had was these flower boxes on these cobblestone streets, but it was just beautiful. I mean, you mm-hmm. take these big stone buildings <laughs> with the flowers draping over the edges and all the colors. It was just fabulous. But, Bobby, you got to get back on track. I know I do, but I'm I don't want to start we on my farmhouse so yeah. until so we get into fun. our next. <laughs> we were having so much fun. Next we are going to uh, take a quick break. And as you're talking about those cottages in Carmel, remember the, uh, I was thinking about the, the, he just passed away, unfortunately, recently, the uh, Kincaid, Thomas Kincaid. Yes. Yeah. Did a lot of those yes. paintings, Oh, totally, right? yeah. That's Absolutely. what reminds me of thinking about that, that what you were just describing. That gives you your cottage. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Joe Cochera with the Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series, sitting alongside Bobby and Buddy. We will be back with you to continue in just a minute. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Are you and your lifestyle fulfilled by the properties that you own? Do you need to rethink or look at different options, perhaps even in different places on the globe? Either locally or globally, you need competencies and commitments to achieve your goals most effectively. Bobby Decker, working with her teammates in Sotheby's International Realty, with over 750 offices in 52 countries and territories, can help. Even here in the San Francisco Bay Area, if a property isn't what she or her team believes they can effectively market, they will find a high-quality Sotheby's agent that has the right expertise. For more information or assistance, contact Bobby at 650-346-5352. Visit her website at www.bobbydecker.com or email bobby.decker at sotheby'srealty.com. That's bobby.decker at sotheby'srealty.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series, as we continue this uh, series on the different residential building styles. Sitting alongside Bobby and Buddy. As we move into finish up on another Friday, I'm going to throw it back to Bobby to talk about our next style that we have. She wants to talk about the farmhouse, right? The farmhouse. Now, in this case, it doesn't refer necessarily to the style, Mm -hmm. but more to the location and the function. Okay, they were originally mm-hmm. built out on very rural land, emphasis on a very agrarian lifestyle. Mm-hmm. 
And many farmhouses were modeled after popular architectural styles at the time that they were built, such as a Victorian or a colonial, because they're more of a little mishmash, right? right? But if you're living in a farmhouse, and you're obviously living on a farm, (laughs) okay, they were built for need rather than for design, and they featured like really functional porches, traditional space creating much more informal and inviting exterior. And then you have to know that they had what was called a mud room. And yeah. people go, what's yeah. a mud room? And, well, that's where the mud is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when you come in you from the outside. You take off your boots. boots and, and you leave your dirty jackets and jeans. And, and what are those? Jodhapurs? What do you call No, what do they call those overalls? leather things that protect oh. your, chaps. your chaps? You know, I mean, you would take off your dirty stuff. Mm, if you're yeah. out riding with the horse and all, yeah, and you all didn't that bring it into the house. Yeah, and you mentioned that this kind of melds with some of the different styles. Remember exactly. when you talked about Dutch colonial, mm-hmm. the Dutch door is infamous. Mm-hmm. It keeps the, your one kind of critter in the house or your children in the house, but it keeps the critters from coming in. But it lets <laughs> the air flow through by opening the top half of that door. So, yeah, that's really a meld of a bunch of different styles. It is, and I mean, I think it's just awful that they didn't want little piggies and chickens that come in the house. <laughs> well, remember the ranch story, one of the ranches we nope. were selling with the rattlesnake that got in the house? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh. I would have done with a Dutch door then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we'll move on. Let's let's go to Oriental. We've been Here so we global with all these different styles, yeah. Mediterranean, Greek Revival, you name it. Um, let's go Oriental. So... The style has really gone, undergone a lot of westernization. The oriental design is rooted in Chinese architecture. Other Asian countries adapted certain design features from the Chinese culture and created various oriental styles. This is sort of like colonial. We could probably go through a, bit, a long list of various oriental styles. Most of these styles are characterized by curved roof that expands you know, far beyond the exterior walls. So, you, you, you know, and, and I love the ones with a little curve up at the corners of the roof. That just, that says to me, that says Oriental. Mm-hmm. That's probably the most outstanding feature that I, that I get with Oriental. But rounded doors and some of those things really say Oriental as well. But it's feng shui. That's why. Uh, You've got to stay in the feng shui of a house. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, you, you know. know. the curving paths. I mean, yeah. when it, you really do, and, and many, many um, Asian clients have someone who is a feng shui master mm. come in mm. and look at the home prior. That's one of the contingencies when we used to have contingencies, yeah. Joe, <clears throat> is that they come in and make sure that all of the elements, the chi is there. And they basically you know, give it their blessing in, se- in yeah. essence, right, from right. a feng shui I, perspective. I have a Sotheby's story on a, four, <laughs> on a $47 million house. And the gentleman flew in on a private plane, his feng shui master, to go through the house to make really? sure that it was that he could buy it. Well, I guess if Absolutely. you spend forty-seven million on a house, yeah, you can afford fifty thousand dollars to yeah. fly, throw, bring probably the private, a, probably a wise investment. private aircraft mm-hmm. to bring in your feng shui master. Mm-hmm. Interesting. All right. Well. Well, now why don't we go from Asia? Asia to. Shotgun. New Orleans. New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. Are we going to talk New Orleans or are we going to talk the shotgun? Uh... The shotgun is the New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> They've got so many of those. They're so weird looking. But So this is funny. A shotgun house is a narrow rectangular domestic residence, usually no more than 12 feet um, wide, with rooms arranged one behind the other and doors at each end of the house. So if you could picture this. Uh, it was most popular, most pop- popular style house in the southern United States from the end of the American Civil War. That was 1861 to 1865 through the 1920s. So lots of these are common in New Orleans. If you could picture, right, visualize, uh-huh. once you walk to the front door, you, you see nothing but the back door, right, so to speak. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but teacher, teacher, I have a story for you. Yes. Teacher, can I, can I tell you this story? Yes. HGTV, the brothers. Ah, yeah. Property Brothers. Right. They were in a competition on were a they? shotgun house. Seriously. Yeah, one brother did one, one side. One side and, and one brother did really? the other. Yeah. It was fun. one of the funnest programs they ever did. Wow. It really was, Joe. It was so cool. And some of the rooms that, well, it, I forget which brother did it, but the brother that won kept more in the New Orleans style. 
Yeah, Isn't and one went a little more I, modern. Went a little inside. more modern, which didn't quite go with the shot. You know uh-huh. that it was beautiful, yeah. but it's just the other one integrated all this New Orleans. Yeah. And it was very, very Yeah, very entertaining show. I could not. It's like being in a railroad car. I couldn't live in a house like yeah, that, but know, they did a beautiful say, job. Yeah, it would be odd for me, but um, I guess, again, you grow up around something and you become familiar with yeah, it. It's, and, it's, yeah, it's, it's commonplace. You see it yeah. every day. History. You know, so we don't see shotgun houses here very often in California. Mm-mm. But if you're living in New Orleans, it's kind of de rigueur. It's mm-hmm. part, of, part of the culture. It's part, yeah. of, part of what happens in New Orleans. Well, then we've got Creole. There we go. Which I love, by the way. Oh, Creole. The food. <laughs> <laughs> the food. Let me just, yeah, you know, yeah. the way to a man's heart stirs yeah, tongue, right? That's right. Oh, the you got Creole us, you got us thinking about all that shrimp and the gumbo. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, good. Maybe a little wine to go with it. <laughs> Let's create the picture, Joe. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm back here at the right. cottage. You can all go with the food when we're done with this program. How's that? Right, good. Type of house that was common along the Gulf Coast mm-hmm. and associated with rivers in the 19th century. Two features of this style are thought to be influences from other places in France's former colonial empire. The full front porch is believed to have originated from the Caribbean islands, while the high gabled roof and the ridge of which is parallel to the street accommodating the porch as well as the mass of the house is thought to be very much French Canadian in origin. So the porch is, is pretty much, I don't believe there's any porch at all on the shotgun. I don't remember. Mm. It's just I, a front door. It's a there, there are kind of two front doors. Exactly. But there was one where there was kind of a little steel rail, mm-hmm. and you kind of walked up the side. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't call that a porch. It's still part mm-hmm. of the entryway. But it prob- you know some of those sit up a little bit high. Um, probably to try and keep away from those the little water. critters that, well, the mm-hmm. critters water, that come and yeah. eat your house sure. are really prevalent down south. You know, the ones we also have here in California. Mm-hmm. The, those little bugs that eat our the little wood. Termites. Little termites that come and <laughs> yes, enjoy, yes. enjoy well, your house. The flooding is a big issue, so yeah. that's why they pitch them up a little in New Orleans. But the full front porches, I have to tell you, of all the houses we've talked about, Joe, mm-hmm. and of all the things that can be on a house, that porch, I wish we'd get back to it. It'd be uh, more neighborly. I agree 100%. These, I agree. You know, these garage doors where you drive in, you put them down, and you are now in your home. Mm-hmm. No visual contact whatsoever with your neighbors. Yeah. Um, that's that's a toughie. I really like yeah, the porches. I'd agree. You know, but, buddy, our backyard being on the water is very much like that. Yeah, it really we look is. out on the inner Same lagoon. concept. We yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you can kind of, you know, get out on your little boat and float across and say... Hi. Not, hi. Not, not, nothing about alcohol. Okay, I, I won't go there. I won't go there. Hey, guys, now I have a test for you because we've got a little bit of time left. Okay. So we've been to the West Coast. We've been to the East Coast. We've been to the South. Who wants to take what were the predominant styles in the West? Hmm. I'll let you guys think because I think I'm ready for this. Ranch is one that's very mm-hmm. predominant here. Mediterranean. Mm-hmm. Also, is something that, mm-hmm. that we do a lot of. And then, of course, Bobby started with this in the first one, Pueblo. Mm. Pueblo. So I got the West covered. And Eichler. Well, and, and Eichler. That's very germane to but yeah. San Francisco The only reason I keep bringing LA. him up is because of what he tried to do. Yeah. With non-discrimination. And the 50s do diversity. Mm-hmm. Okay, who's got the East Coast? Come on, Bobby. You, oh, you jumped Coast, in so, on some of that's those. That's so easy. you got your Cape Cod. And you've got if your you're Cape fond Cod. Of sand dunes. <laughs> and you've got your Cape Cod. <laughs> Can you tell which style I'm a little stuck on? Yeah, yeah. Not the salt box. The salt box like... is cool, but I would not yeah, like living in it as right. much as Cape Cod. Yeah, mm-hmm. out on Nantucket, some of those salt boxes, though, the way they, they sit, cool. oh, they are pretty interesting. The painted ladies. The painted oh, ladies. Yes. If you guys could um, build Martha's your uh, Vineyard, not Nantucket though. I made a mistake. The painted ladies are on Martha's Vineyard. Martha. Martha's Vineyard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you guys could build your dream home, what would it be, or a va- variation of? If someone said, "Money's no object, location. This is what would you guys do? Beach house on what the it, ocean. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're we're ocean kids. One yeah. story. 
yeah. on the ocean with doors that pull back. Okay. Now, you can tell I haven't thought about this much. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You fold the doors three back. Seconds, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so you have total, yeah. totally open air because, you know, geckos don't bother me. Yeah. And that seems to be, as a matter of fact, the more geckos you have, the fewer bugs you the have. The fewer bugs you have. They're very, good very good at that control. Yeah, absolutely. Buddy? Well, you know, I have to say I'm an ocean guy, yeah. too. But if I were to go but for... But I want to be on it. I don't want to be looking at it right. from yeah. like a cliff. So I, I think there's, there's three kinds of people. There's your water people. Mm-hmm. Your mountain people and your prairie people, okay? okay. So, oh no, and your golf people. Oh. You're leaving poor <laughs> Joe out. Oh, that's right. That's that's a whole other area. Oh, we yeah. forgot One to go. What's and the you... golf style house? Anything that's on a golf well, course? I'll tell you what. It's funny. As much as I love golf, I'm with you guys. I think we would match up well. I'm the ocean person as well. I mean, I could if I need to golf, I'll go golf. Honestly, mm-hmm. if I could see it at a distance, that's fine. That's but if fine. I had a choice, it would be on the ocean oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, let it let yeah. it all come in. Something about it. Something we probably ought to do a whole show on that. <laughs> on the ocean and That's listening true. to the waves. Ocean the waves homes. That would be neat. That would be a yeah. fun show. Yes. Homes on the ocean. All right. With that, we're going to go see how we could continue to fantasize about these homes on the ocean. We're going to we're going to build <laughs> until then. Thanks again for tuning in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. On behalf of Bobby and Buddy, we'll be back with you next time. Take care. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.